Hi friends, welcome back. So headline, Dow 150,000, it could happen if the 2020s turn out like the Roaring 20s. And uh, this is referring to 100 years ago, the Roaring 20s where everyone was jumping in the market. It was an awesome time and we're all making money. But if you know your history, <laughs> in the 1930s, not so great. Basically a decade long recession and after that, World War II. Now, where are we? If you wanna look at this and talk about history, and it's always fun to talk about this kind of stuff, um, you can see here, so this is the uh, Dow, the green line, uh, essentially what happened in the decade of, again, 1920s. And then the red line is where we are in the 2020s. And the question I pose to you is, um, where are we? And, and is history going to repeat itself? Uh, is this crypto AI craze going to keep on and going and eventually peter out? Or are we going to be like, yo, we're learning from the past and we're going to peter out before we get to the uh, end of the decade? Um, the thing is, too, guys, with, with sort of, you know, decades, when we talk about, say, 20s or 30s or whatever, um, the numbers are a bit artificial because anything can happen any particular year. I think psychologically, though, we like to organize things by, oh, this is the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, right? But, you know, it's not like it, it suddenly you have, you know, say, 2030 and everything changes, you know, exactly on that date. I'm just saying this is sort of how we organize history in our mind. But it is important to learn from the past. Now, it was interesting because I was looking at the market today. Um, of you know what was up what was down and you can actually see it i mean visually you can actually see it um a lot of red except guess what <laughs> nvidia so um that's been the one that's essentially been everyone's been piling their money into this thing going yo uh, ai cryptos forever nvidia is sort of the picks and shovel play everyone who wants to be an ai and crypto is going to you know use nvidia chips and they have been selling chips like crazy and we've you know people have been like yo if you're going to sell chips like crazy uh, it's only going to continue, but uh, I do question that because ultimately, so for example, um, is say you know Apple or Google or Meta or whatever are going to buy said chips or Tesla or Amazon, whoever um, they're going to invest a bunch of money in said thing. Yes, Nvidia makes a bunch of money on that, but do the other companies who bought the chips from Nvidia are they going to reap the rewards? And that remains to be seen. And so this will be essentially the other companies questioning whether or not they want to jump into that sort of AI chip trade. That's, that, that's what they're watching, right? Is it actually worth the investment? Um, if you take a look at this, this is also stuff that was going on the market today. Um, you can see tech was up, uh, energy and utilities. Um, the energy thing, um, I think, has to do with the uh, uh, essentially what's going on in the Middle East, which we'll go over in a moment here. And then everything else is down. Um, this shows how, guys, our market is a bit uh, lopsided and unhealthy. But it's been like that for a while where it's not necessarily everything moving up. It's just some things. And if you look at the returns of the S&P 500, it's like Nvidia makes up, you know, 40% of that. <laughs> so that's been that's been our story. Um, the other thing you want to be tracking as well, uh, what's going on with treasuries, because, you know, if, if you're uncertain about, you know, putting more risk into the market, then you just go with the safe bet. Uh, so right now, two years at uh, 4% and the uh, 10 year is at 3.91. Uh, so that's uh, that's that. Um, also, too, um, this is actually kind of a funny one that sort of captures uh, where we are. Uh, this is the headline here. Investors borrowed, right? Uh, leverage borrowed like crazy during the rally. Now they're paying the price. And, um, you know, that's what happened with the carry trade in Japan. But it's, it's a lot of crypto like that. And you can talk about your NVIDIA, your Teslas, Apples, Googles, etc. Um, the, the access to easy uh, credit and low interest rates sort of encourage people to do that. Um, and this is sort of when, you know, the markets turn when the equation changes, right? Maybe it's not so... Uh, cheap to borrow money anymore. Um, it was interesting because um, this was a headline here, carry trade blow up uh, haunts markets rattled by rapid unwind. And um, they described uh, the um, the amount you could get in Mexico. So essentially you could borrow, uh, you know, Japanese yen at zero, throw it in the Mexican bonds and it was like 10% or throw it in the NVIDIA or Bitcoin, which you're like, you know, uh, doubling or tripling your money this year. And when everyone's doing it, um, and, and if you can time it right, you're borrowing as much as you can because it's essentially multiplying, magnifying your returns. The problem is, though, when the trade doesn't work um, and if you, you know, got in late uh, and you're essentially on the wrong side of the trade, it can magnify your losses. So always be careful with that. Um, that's sort of what, you know, people are doing. And it's interesting because if you, if you look at this, you can you can actually see it here. Um, this is the uh, essentially the comparing um, yen, so that would be Japan, yuan would be China, and then the dollar, right? And so um, when you're buying an asset uh, one place and, and you know, um, or actually using uh, funds from one place and then buying asset in another place, you can kind of see how that worked out. 
So in Japan, um, or at least the yen funded trade, because you don't necessarily have to be Japanese to do that, just you're uh, going into borrowing yen because it's low interest. Um, they're actually were doing really quite well in July. This is the return, but they actually took a, a big, big dip. You guys can see it right there. Uh, it looks like people who are doing this with dollar though are underwater at the moment. And um, people were in, the, in China are actually kind of just swimming, <laughs> barely, barely treading right there. But you guys can see this it actually um, really captures the, uh, the plunge that we saw recently. Um, the other thing too is, which I was thinking about as well, and um, you guys probably know this movie, Dumb and Dumber. It reminds me where we are in, in the market and, and why am I bringing up the, the Dumb and Dumber thing is, you know, when you see uh, people are like, yo, you know, doggy coins and kitty coins and, you know, rabbit coin and squirrel coins. And it just seemed like everyone and anyone could make money in the market. And you had people that essentially have no business <laughs> talking about this kind of stuff um, and can barely read. But, you know, if, if they're all telling all their friends, essentially, um, I guess you could say the dumb money, the dumb and dumber money or whatever. Um, when you see the sort of like rapid explosion of that, and you guys know this, this essentially access to easy credit, access to, you know, uh, money from all around the world. And you can go into any whatever kitty doggy crypto that you want. That's sort of the where we are. And so, you know, the crash that we're in now, um, uh, or I guess is when it happens, because I, I do expect some sort of memes, memes uh, crypto crash eventually. Uh, it's I mean, it's happened in some, but it, it, crypto is still around, believe it or not. Um, but uh, it could be quite awful for a lot of people. And the worst thing about this stuff is that you will not lo only lose everything, uh, you will lose everything and go in negative. So be very, very careful with leverage on risky assets. Um, there's actually a couple um, interesting comments coming in. Also, I'm going to read this. Uh, this is 12 hours ago. Someone writes, NVIDIA is still the most hyped stock as of now. Uh, people are expecting 200 by the end of the year. Again, this is coming in from our community. Uh, here's another comment, and this is fun just to hear people's opinion um, from our community. Uh, Warren Buffett sees no additional growth in Apple. Follow smart money. Everything is baked in. And if you've been following this, essentially Warren Buffett sold uh, half his Apple and uh, you know piled into cash and treasuries. Um, the thing that's going on in the market too, because I guess like guys keep you updated and things. Um, there's this weird corruption story. Uh, this is B Riley. So if anyone's in this, um, if you you know have been getting you know notices from them, etc., I'd like to hear your thoughts. But um, basically, um, they're under investigation by the SEC. It looks like all sorts of crazy uh, fraud things may be happening over there. Um, I was looking at the stock, and it's interesting when you when you look at this thing. Like the past five years, it's I guess down sixty percent. Uh, today, I think it like uh, went down by fifty percent. It was just like a, a, a massive drop. And essentially, it seems like there's money all over the place, and there's people who can't pay it back. <laughs> that's that's a story for all these kind of things, right? It says here you can read it. Uh, the inquiry uh, includes, and the SEC is looking into this review of possible improper trading by uh, other insiders. Um, and then it says here, uh, this says another topic regulators have asked about is the movement between companies or receivables due from cash strapped retail customers whose repayment might be doubtful, right? That's the story of the stuff you're going to, and you're going to hear these kind of things, right? Here's another one. Um, this is a interesting, they, they, um, were investing in this company, uh, cause there were multiple companies involved, but one was called prophecy. <laughs> so uh, kind of word of advice, um, if people are like asking you to throw your money in the prophecy, I would be very, very leery if I walk away. That's, I mean, that's the, that's the name of the company. Prophecy invest. It, it kind of reminds me of, um, I guess we're getting biblical here. Uh, if someone says, Hey, throw it, throw your money in the ark, right? Meaning ark invest, maybe time to run away, but yes, prophecy, a uh, prophecy investors who lost money have questioned in a lawsuit, whether con and properly use prophecy proceeds to acquire control of FRG himself. This time I just different things that they were involved in. And then it said here, a co-founder of that fund pleaded guilty in November in a 294 million fraud case. I just wanted to point this stuff out to you because the, the kind of money that we're talking about and, you know, when markets un unwind, you know, when we come out of the bubble, you end up hearing these kind of stories of like, oh, you were lending this money to who and you were trading with who. And this was all essentially paper money because it's, it's all based on, you know, borrowing and lending. And then the money gets or, or the contracts get swapped around. And for example, you can read this here. It says. Um, one of the biggest pieces was the FRG buyout deal, which was funded, right? And you can hear multiple companies involved, um, or you could say funds, uh, part by a 600 million loan that Nomura Holdings arranged by B. Riley. Um, the Tokyo-based uh, bank committed 240 million to the debt itself. <laughs> and then it says here, uh, B. Riley, and that's the one they're under investigation, put up about 1.5 billion of various assets as collateral for Nomura debt. And the thing is though, when they're putting up this much money for collateral, some of this stuff may be on leverage as well, right? So it's just, 
it, it's a you know it's a, it's like where's the ball and you're, you're swapping the cups around that kind of thing um and the one thing i was thinking about with this is like it shows how you know there's access to easy money there are things that um, people aren't necessarily disclosing publicly right so behind the scenes they knew that there was shady stuff going on but they were trying to uh, hide it and then also to um you know someone eventually finds out and the dominoes start to fall um this was b riley's so their website is his uh, this is what their quote here delivering unparalleled value for every financial need um yeah <laughs> i just wanted to point that stuff out um guys the other thing that's going on in the market is, is actually a, a, a real concern um and, and i mean everything's a real concern but i, I just I, I keep hearing headlines about this it says a feared iranian attack on israel top threat to stocks in a busy week are they going to attack or not right is iran going to attack israel um the usa is going to try to head that off i guess we're sending more forces um you know I, I i can't predict this i i i can't predict if we're gonna if we're gonna you know get involved heavier uh, more heavy in this um i just i hope um i hope cool aheads do prevail um you know everyone in in this region though that they like it, it, they want to show that they're strong right so if one side hits you and if you don't respond and if you feel like you have, you know, a tenuous control on, on you want to call it throne or your, your chair, or however you want to say it, but, you know, your position, then you want to show strength and you want to hit the other side back. And then the other side's like, oh, well, you, you just hit me and I'm worried about, you know, you make me look weak and I want to hit you back. And it, there's, there's, no, there's no good way to solve these kind of things. And I, what I mean by no good way is because there's always going to be someone who's unhappy with, with whatever deal that you make, right? Because there's always going to be someone like, oh, you know, you, you you made a terrible deal and then there'll be some you know smaller faction that'll split off and then they'll start causing violence because they don't agree with the main factions deal it, it's it's honestly a, a mess as, as i mean i've i've lived through this stuff i'm 49 i was much my age but you know I, i've seen this game before and it's it's not a fun game um and i i don't think there's any winners to be honest in, in these things so i i just i just wish that we were uh, the U.S. We're, we're not so heavily involved with this stuff, so that, that's my my opinion on these things. Um, and you know, I don't mention Gaza all the time, but it, it is it is you know there are civilians involved, and in, in, um, yeah, I, I but I, I, I'm well aware of it, and, and I, I wish we would not be involved. Um, the um, the Ukraine, and, and it's hard to get more somber in this, but this stuff serious. Um, this was interesting because I, I I I guess Ukraine now is actually advancing um, into Russian territory. That's been the news lately. Um, and the basic gist of it is, I can show you a map here. Um, this is Ukraine, and there's like three regions here. So for those of you who are familiar with with this um, part of the world, uh, you'll probably know exactly where these where these parts are. I guess Kursk was even hit a bit. And um, unfortunately, there's a lot of civilians caught up in this stuff. So it's, it's, it's the same situation with, say, in the Middle East with Gaza or, or here with, you know, civilians is, you know, I wish we could just take the leaders and, and they can, you know, do like a Roman you know, Colosseum kind of thing, and just two people, and if you, you know, make your differences out there. But the way it always plays out is that you just drag a bunch of young people, you know, um, in, into the conflict, and they end up fighting their their brothers and sisters. And 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 I do mean that sincerely, because I, I I just there's you know I I I get upset when you talk about this stuff. And if you guys know my history, you know, I, I lost my family to Vietnam War, so I I always take this stuff very very seriously. And I I, I do hope um, cooler heads prevail. But yeah, these are some of the headlines. Ukraine's incursion displays is more than 133,000 in Russia. So um, I, I guess the idea, though, is that if Ukraine goes on the offensive, they can use that as a bargaining chip and hopefully bring some peace. I, you know, that's the idea. But you 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 always have the threat of, you know, nuclear weapons or is someone just going to blow up one of the nuclear power plants? And, you know, that essentially ruins it for everyone. I mean, it's it's all the, the best way for, you know, I mean, obviously the, the best situation is for either any of these you know, be it Russia or the Middle East, is just stop fighting, please. Um, you know, I don't, I don't think there's any winners in, in this kind of stuff, and I just want to make that clear. So um, there's that, and uh, you know, sorry I said to make these things somber, but it's important to, to talk about this stuff. Um, what's interesting too is, is we talk about what's going on in the markets, and you know, we talked about say the yen carry trade. Um, this was an interesting headline today. It says in foreign investors pull record amount of money uh, from China. So I mean, essentially, like these kind of things are unwinding. So it could be any number of things. One is um, you know, people don't necessarily trust the, the economy over there, the markets. Um, also, you know, people uh, can't borrow anymore and they got to pay back the debt. So eventually the, the Pied Piper calls. And what's interesting about the, the China situation is um, there were, and this, you can actually see some of the charts here, 
you know, that there's, there were records money, you know, going in. So this is the years starting in like 2003 and you can see it, it's kind of like what 2013 or 2000 even recently peaked, uh, was that like around 2022, but then, you know, really, really dropped off as people are pulling their money out. You know, there's a slowdown in China. We've talked about this. Um, the, the news is always the same. The government's trying to, trying to do something. I mean, it's just hard to, to get people to, to spend your way that you wanted to, because when people are worried, they're just going to, you know, essentially bank a mattress kind of stuff. Um, and this was an interesting one. So essentially the uh, banks, you know, they're rushing in the bonds and the government's trying to stop them from doing that. And it's like, yo, you need to be like loaning people out to me, loaning money to people out to people or, or putting money into real estate to help us save things. Or <laughs> the government's like over um, regulating the situation. You, you can make the case um, because, you know, they want control. And then that even uh, scares foreign investors even more because, well, if this isn't a free market, right? What, why, why would I invest in China? And so you'll see these people pulling out and they're even, they're telling the banks, they're telling various brokers or whatever, you know, stop doing that stuff and just get in line. And, you know, this is things that we saw in the, the tech, um, you know, shakedowns in China as well to where like if the government can just pick any whatever industry and punish it. Um, some of those trades ended up being pretty good if you could catch it at the bottom, but you just, you just don't know it with, with, with the China trade. Like it's just like there's any number of things that, that bad that could happen. And then you put that on top of like, okay, well, what's the alternative? Um, generally speaking, right, uh, the U.S. markets uh, tend to be very strong. And so that's why you'll see a lot of money come into the U.S. stuff. And the problem, though, with the USA is we, we got our own issues to deal with. So we're in election year. And, and I always talk about the national debt and budget deficit um, headline just came out today. I'll, I'll read it for you guys. It says budget deficit climbs 10% in July as government spends more uh, on interest than Medicare and the military. And there was a couple of things I was thinking about with this is, is one is, um, you know, just to keep our government afloat, there, there's pressure to cut interest. So, you know, <laughs> we have to make so many payments on that. But I, I was thinking though, is that from um, Fed uh, Chair Jerome Powell's point of view, and it's not really talked about that often, but, you know, maybe to take care of our, our debt, we'll just think, well, we'll just keep inflation higher for longer, uh, just print more money essentially. And I mean, let's pay back our, our, our debts that way and, and keep the economy floating. Um, as, as well, you know, hey, if you need money, more money for the military, print more money, you know, and and, and for something like the military, for example, a lot of it is um, is, is salaries, right, of, of many of the personnel. You also have, if you want to build more weapons, et cetera, and you, just, you can just print more. Now, obviously, you have a problem with inflation, and then, you know, some industries will, will, de will decline um, when the money printing stops. So here's a good example of that. And, and this is more than just mo printing money. So this, this is here. U.S. College's debt strains mount in one of the worst years since 2009, and it says, uh, 15 schools have disclosed technical payment defaults, right, in 2024. And um, I guess it was in last year was there were 17 of these. This is something that also takes advantage of um, uh, poor people as, as well. So they kind of, and you'll see a lot of fraud. And, and, this, and this, again, this is more the more technical colleges and two-year ones. You'll see it in four-year ones, but this is sort of these more, pro the, the for-profit ones is where you see big problems in, in our education industry. Um, because again, it's fueled by people have access to um, easy credit and then they can get into, you know, whatever for-profit university or college, I, I guess you could say. It's kind of the same situation of where um, you had to say the housing bubble of the, um, you know, 08, people had access to easy money and then you're you're able to sell tons of houses. So it's, it's kind of the same concept, right? Um, and this shows sort of like how this the, um, the bubble is starting to unwind. Um, the one thing I, I was thinking about this stuff is, is when you talk about all of these things, and, and I mention these things all the time, you know, some things will, will blow up, um, meaning like not come back, and then some things will come back in terms of bubbly stuff. So I, I give you an example, and, and I was thinking about the Starbucks one and talking about all this stuff together. So in, in the era of, say, crypto, right, where everything explodes and, and we're all drinking, or, or drinking, we're all buying cryptos, et cetera, um, my personal opinion, that won't come back. And I think Starbucks is an interesting example because think about this. Um, you know, when I was a kid, kid, uh, there was no such thing as like Starbucks. Uh, we would we would have coffee houses, but they were often locally owned. Um, and then the, the Starbucks thing just really exploded. And and um, I think it'd be more like my high school years. I remember uh, seeing it, you know, pop up everywhere. And I remember when they were going public. I told everyone, "You got to get Starbucks. It's going to be the next thing." And and then suddenly, you know, where we are today, and people are, you know, buying. If you're in the big cities, like ten dollar. Uh, cups of coffee, which which is kind of nuts if if, if you think about it, right? Because you don't actually need. Well, it depends. Everyone's gonna have a different point of view if you need coffee, but it, it's it's not really nutritious, right? It's not like food. Um, a lot of these, you know, when you go to Starbucks, it's it's uh, and, uh how, how you say it? 
I, I don't know if you want to categorize as ice cream, and, and I'd be curious your guys' thoughts on like where do you categorize Starbucks? But you know this this trend of of essentially ex, it, um, you can call it premium coffee or expensive coffee, however you, word you want to say. Um, we may be coming to end an era, and the in, here in Korea, I mentioned this to before on the channel. We have a, a new thing that's been happening the last I don't know year or two years where you know these places are now no longer um, walk in and sit down. It's more like take out and they only charge you like a dollar or two dollars for a cup of coffee right and so will something like starbucks uh, stick around the the reason why i'm bringing it up is that um you'll have these sort of things like so definitely starbucks you could argue was a bubble <laughs> you could argue that it'd be interesting people don't talk about it enough but there are still assets there they have a, they have a very very strong brand and they have you know locations all over the place and currently there it looks like there's going to be a, a attempted you know hostile takeover of this thing we'll, we'll see um, I've, I've been keep seeing news about this pop up the last couple of weeks. So this is actually a really interesting one to watch because it's a company that, that we all know and, and what's going to happen to it. I don't I don't think they're going to go bankrupt. I don't think so. I mean, it's a, it's a strong, strong brand. But will it will it be like the pinnacle of, of you know, these kind of places or coffee joints forever uh, in, in China, for example, um, they've really lost market share there. And I can just tell you here in Korea, they, they've definitely lost market share for sure. They're still around. I mean, they, we still have Starbucks and, and they have good locations, but they're just, it's just such a competitive market. And, and I think Starbucks is a, is a really great lesson to where, yes, we, we, you know, people do spend money on this stuff, but you know, when, when, and, and you can go back to the Nvidia thing, um, you know, for example, when other companies see that you're making money on chips, like don't expect your dominance to last forever. <laughs> you know, there, there are other companies out there. And so that's something I always, you know, warn you guys. It's like, yes, there was a time when it seemed like Starbucks would, would control the world and, and they did at a point, but you know, when people see you're making money, they want to have a piece of that pie too. And so it's a similar thing with Tesla and electric vehicles. Um, it, it's just, you know, it, only the, the, I guess you could say people who are, are, have the blinders on think that things are going to last forever. Um, and that's the same with going back to say this chart is comparing it say to the roaring twenties to today, you know, where are we? Um, are we going to have like this, uh, you know, crazy crash of downside, or are there still more upsides left in your cryptos, AIs, and whatever, you know, bubbly asset, or is it even going to be an even new bubble asset that we aren't even talking about? Um, that you know, maybe there's going to be this explosion, as Elon Musk wants it, of humanoid robots <laughs> and flying cars, right? Who knows? Uh, there's always a promise of something, and, and that's sort of. Um, what you track in the market and it's fun to to do this stuff together so anyway i always appreciate your time everyone and um please share your thoughts and uh, i'll catch you all in the next video